Hello folks, a very warm welcome to another video here in the Microsoft Sim. Feels like I haven't said those words for a long time, but in reality, it's probably only been a couple of weeks, but geez, a couple of weeks in YouTube land makes a difference <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of view count and subscriber growth and all those metrics. Um, when you don't feed the YouTube beast for a couple of weeks, well... YouTube forgets you. The YouTube community kind of drops right off if you're not, yeah, publishing content. Um, but anyway, as, look, what can I do? <laughs> YouTube is not my life. It is it is a mere hobby, folks, unlike some others who seem to uh, live for this caper. Anyway, welcome to another video and welcome to a first impressions look at the aircraft on your screen. Yes, Daddy has a new toy. This is the PMDG 737-600. I succumbed to temptation at 35 US. I talked myself into it and then out of it and into it and out of it and then back into it. 35 US, um, which on the, on the currency exchange rates is a fair bit more in Aussie dollars. And yeah, I... I didn't rush at it, but when I when I saw them release it for thirty five, I thought, "Geez, that's a that's an interesting pricing strategy from PMDG." I, I'm guessing that not many people, or they don't think many people, will actually want the six hundred if they price it too high. You know, I think they sold the seven hundred for that was about sixty US or something, wasn't it? So this is a, a much cheaper, much cheaper version. And look, at the end of the day, if you just want to fly a seven thirty seven. Of good quality in the Microsoft Sim, well, this is a pretty bloody good choice, isn't it? At the end of the day, when you're inside, let me jump inside for you. I'm going to fly from the right hand seat. Um, when you're inside, all looks the same. Now, they might have subtle differences in terms of how they fly the various models, but to an old fellow like me, it all looks the same. Now, and feels the same as well. I'm flying from the right hand seat because that's something I like to do as a extra sort of challenge but also because well i've been booted from the left hand seat because my my co-conspirator my co-pilot my number one gal jude has been promoted to el capitan congratulations to you jude and uh, as we know el capitan sit on the left hand seat so i've been booted across to the right here but look i don't mind that at all i will i will sit anywhere that my love tells me to sit just for the pleasure of her company. Anyway, we'll get back to Jude later in the flight, folks. I want to go back outside. First impression style video, folks. It's going to be fairly short. We're going to do a departure segment, bit of a yarn in the cruise, and then we'll land the thing, hopefully. Flying in the US Airways delivery, we're not... <laughs> a US Airways aeroplane has no business being where we are today, folks. We're doing an FS economy run. We're in Africa, of all places. I'm not sure any any uh, airport in Africa ever saw a 737-600. There weren't that many made. They certainly wouldn't have seen one in Airways, US Airways livery. But I guess this is a bit of a tribute. bit of a tribute to Sully and Jeff and the crew of US 1549, otherwise known as a miracle on the Hudson. Now, I'm fully aware that that aircraft was an A320. So this tribute, yes, is lacking, is lacking a little bit in realism. <laughs> But most of my videos are, folks. Let me show you where we are and where we're going, and then we'll uh, we'll get this bird fired up and get out of here. All right. So here's the plan. I said we're in Africa, and I'm delivering on that statement, specifically the country of Namibia, uh, and even more specifically, the city of Vintok. Is that how you say it? Apologies to my Namibian friends. I think I do have viewers from Namibia. I think I do. A shout out to you if you're listening, if you're watching. So shortish hop, one and a half hours flying time across to Zimbabwe, Vicky Falls, to be specific there. Um, yeah, that's the route. Northeasterly direction. Looks like we've got a nice tailwind, so a bit of breeze up the date. Who doesn't enjoy that from time to time? Um, yeah, that's going to be the flight. First impression style video. Keep it to around about 20 minutes or so, folks. Um, if you're interested and if you're still on the fence, 
in terms of the 737-600. I'm not a salesperson for PMDG by any stretch of the imagination, and this is not going to be a detailed exploration of the aircraft. But if you just want to see an old bloke pretending to be a first officer in a 737-600 flying from Namibia to Zimbabwe, well, this video might interest you. Let's go flying. Dead said, I feel like I aged 20 years in that taxi. Oh, bloody long way down to the bottom of 2.6 here. I don't have 20 years to spare. <laughs> Maybe should have thought this one through a little bit more, Jude. Started on the runway, perhaps. <laughs> anyway, we are at take off readiness, I think. We've got our flap set five, indicating five. Geez, Dan, I sound like a pilot. Uh, trim set at 5.5 which is what the uh, the box tells me. I should probably change your, um, hang on Jude, how do I get over there for you? Uh, and then just squeeze across. Give me the legs page on your side, Jude. Would you mind that? Show me a bit of leg. There you go, lovely. Oh, Jude, I love the way how you're, you're caressing that checklist. Hey, does you run a tight ship, Jude, hey? Look at that, ready to move the, the yellow thing down. Probably should have been moved a bit further by now, Jude. <laughs> Although we're doing the before takeoff check, I guess. Flaps green light. Yeah, stabiliser trim units. Good. You're going to move that, Jude? Can you actually move that? Oh, you can. Now it's going to be. Oh, this is going to be a bit awkward, Jude. I'm enjoying your. What are these things called? Well, they're called stripes, but there's a, a fancy French name for that, isn't it? The bars is what we call it. And what's this, Jude? You got a bit of. You got a hairy back. What's going on here? You've got the Chewbacca happening. Folks, let's go flying, hey? I think we're right to go. I'm not a... Look, I'm not a, an expert in anything, and especially not a PMTG 737. So if you're looking for procedural accuracy, folks, you're in the wrong place. Um, we've got the auto brakes, we've got the flaps, we've got the trims, we've got the speed brake arm, we've got the altitude plugged in, we've pressed LNAV and VNAV, which apparently you're supposed to do. We've got a speed, we've got flight directors on, we've got auto throttle armed, let's hit the clock, <laughs> a bit of chrono, let's bring the engines up to about 50% or something, make sure they're stabilised, and then you press this screw over here, the magic screw Jude, you'd know all about that, away we go, now we're at altitude here, or 5,500 anyway, and we've derated the takeoff, so it's going to take a little while to get us up to rotation speed, but she's going alright. Sounds good. Thank you. Alright, rotation speed coming up. Round about here, let's go. Me too. Bit of back pressure, there we go. We have achieved liftoff, folks. Positive rate, thank you. Gear's coming up nice and early. Oh, beautiful. Feels beautiful to fly. That's the first thing I'll say in terms of first impressions. I'm actually going to go straight into autopilot mode. Georgie will do a fantastic job of that. Take an outside view for you, may get a little out. Look at that, beautiful. That's a pretty nice deck angle, isn't it? Probably should start bringing some flaps in, Jude, should we? You haven't given me the call, but anyway, 210 knots is what we're targeting in terms of a VNAV speed. Flight director should be pushing down, it is. Through 8000, we need to gain some speed. Up through the flap retraction markers. We can sort of go to flaps 1 at this point. And then we'll go flaps up at 200, I think that's how it's done. Terrain has been represented on the display, I like that. But yeah, probably my biggest takeaway from the few flights that I've done, and flaps can come all the way up now, um, the biggest takeaway is just how good this aeroplane feels to fly. I've never flown a 737 in real life, apart from being stuck at the back of them, up near the Dunnies generally, and generally in earlier models, so the 300s and the 400s, uh, before the 7s and the 8s got introduced to the, the Qantas and the Virgin fleet here in Australia. But uh, yeah, spent too much time in the back of particularly 400s uh, back in the day. But um, my experience of actually flying these aeroplanes in a simulator is limited to the old Zebo mod over there in X-Plane, which uh, I always found to be a very impressive 
Very impressive aeroplane. Yeah, it feels nice to hand fly. Particularly down that sort of, you know, down from about 3,000 feet, or 3,000 AGL anyway. Take, the, take Georgie off, give him a rest, and hand fly it all the way down. Get the auto throttle gone and all the automatics off and just hand fly the thing. It feels really nice. There we go, folks. Beginning the turn, we are flying a SID out of Vintok. Look at that terrain, hey? A little bit of flex happening. I know that people do focus on those sort of things. I fly from inside generally, folks. You're not going to notice the wind flex back inside for you. That's Jude's view. What Jude sees, she looks over. Now I've got, there's a mod that enables the uh, the pilots to be viewed in the cockpit. You can have, I think, both displayed. Oh, hello Jude, I'm inside you. Hey, inside your head. That's a scary place to be, particularly when it looks like that. Oh, Jude. Hair on the back and whatever the hell's happening here on the top of your head. I think someone needs to uh, visit the salon, Jude. Anyway, jump back across to my side. <laughs> and uh, George is doing a fantastic job. We've got a uh, constraint coming up here at Cooey. <laughs> I love it. That's, a, that's an Australian waypoint if ever I heard one. Cooey. Anyway, but we're in Africa, folks. Folks, we'll get us up into the cruise, or Georgie will anyway. And uh, I'll rejoin you at that point. Give you some, some further uh, opinions. That's all this videos are folks my personal opinion um, largely based out of ignorance but based on the way I fly and what I've noticed what matters to me I suppose is what I'm trying to say we'll have a chat in the cruise and then we'll fly uh, an approach down into Vicky Falls so we'll see you for that bit all right establishing the cruise folks flight level 370 just entered um, Botswana airspace not every day you get to say that is it so first impressions folks, let me just continue my series of opinions about this aeroplane. Um, let me start by talking about value. Now value can be somewhat subjective. I'll tell you what value means to me. Am I gonna get am I gonna get enjoyment out of the product? Um, that's what it kind of comes down to for me. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, well, kind of circumstances uh, force most of us, I think, to be quite cautious and selective around how we spend our monies in 2022 with uh, inflation and all the other stuff that's happening in the world. Um, not all of us can afford to just splash our cash on uh, on every add-on that appears. <laughs> Although there are some people that seem to be doing really well, <laughs> really well out there, and uh, yeah. But I am not one of them, so I am selective in terms of how I spend my money. So when this one came through, and I mentioned earlier in the video, 35 US, uh, that's closer to sort of 50 Australian dollars. Um, that's a fair chunk of change for for me. And if I'm going to spend 50 bucks on anything uh, related to flight sim, I want to be relatively sure, relatively certain that I'm getting some value from it. Um, so far. I can say that my expectations have been exceeded in terms of value for me personally. I'm enjoying flying this aeroplane. I'm enjoying learning this aeroplane. For me, it's a learning experience. For those of you that have been flying these things for all these years and are really familiar with the PMDG style, um, you may not be learning much <laughs> at this point. For me, it's a learning experience. Um, I'm not a an aficionado, if that's the right word, aficionado of the 737. So, um, yeah, so there's some learning involved. Um, I won't use the term study level. I think it's a rather meaningless term. Um, but for me, there's a bit of learning required in order to fly this airplane. I'm not flying it um, as a as a professional virtual pilot would. I, I th that's not what I need to do. I just need to learn enough to enjoy myself. That's what simming's about. For me, enjoyment, learning, uh, an escape from <laughs> reality, which I really feel that uh, I personally need more and more of <laughs> as 2022 unfolds. Um, so in terms of, yeah, 
value. That's my that's my take on it. The the visual side of things, it's fantastic. I mean, I love the quality. I, I don't have the right bloody mouse setting here to zoom in. I love the quality of the displays for me, my tired old eyes. Um, I can read everything. <laughs> They've done a great job on the visuals here in the VC. It looks great. The VC, I think, is really impressive. I can't find fault with it. I'm sure there are people that will point out the sort of minutia of what PMDG have done wrong. <laughs> uh, but for me, absolutely fantastic. It, uh, it looks and feels like the, uh, the inside of a 737. I mean, down to, down to the slightly askew paper in the satchel. <laughs> Love it. I don't know, th does the door actually work? I don't know. There's a whole lot of things here, folks, that I haven't explored yet. And, that, and that's part of the value proposition for me. There's stuff that every time I go flying in this thing, I'm learning something new about what's, uh, what's modelled or what I, generally what I've done wrong. <laughs> Um, I just noticed we're getting along the ground. A fair old clip here, 521 up the date, Jude. Well, not up the date. Um, we've got 62 up the date, Jude, doing 521 over the ground. Hey, and you are still absolutely bolted on to that checklist. Hey, you just will not budge. Um, what else? External modelling. Again, there'll be people that pick fault with it. I, I'm not going to be one of them. <laughs> it looks fantastic to me. Whole bunch of liveries now starting to flow through on the .to. Now uh, this is one of them. Um, I've probably picked up half a dozen different liveries, including one that you may see in an upcoming series. I'm I'm very seriously considering doing a series um, as we sort of approach 300 videos on this channel. Yeah, I can't believe it either. Um, doing a I don't know part the sequel to a to a previous series that I did many many years ago. I'm just tossing up whether to invest <laughs> invest the time and the mental energy in doing so. But um, yeah, a bunch of liveries coming through, looks the business, uh, flies the business. In terms of systems, I, I what would I know? <laughs> uh, it's PMDG, so they're known for their the depth of their systems. Everything seems to work pretty bloody well. Um, this panel is just, look at that, it's just absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Hey? Um, yeah, it's really hard to uh, to fault the aeroplane. Um, and, and the purpose of the video is not to come in here and find fault. There's many other channels that <laughs> are available if you want someone to be a, you know, a real critic of this aeroplane. Um, and there's a bunch of real pilots, real 737 Capitans, who have done some really high quality videos um, with the uh, the 700 and, and also some for the 600 as well. And then the community awaits the 737-800. I have no interest at this point in picking up the 800 or the 700 or any other variant. For me, the 600 at 35 US, it look it looks and feels to me like a 737. Uh, I, I, when I'm sitting here, I'm not thinking, oh, this is a 600 and it was only like 60 made and this route's not realistic and, uh, you know, all of that garbage. For me, it's garbage. I'm sitting here in the right seat, right there. <laughs> that looks like a 737NG aeroplane. Um, and that's good enough for me. Whether it resembles real life, it's a bloody game. Or a simulator if you, if you get offended at the term. Well, I don't care if you get offended at the term game. <laughs> it's a bloody game. It's an escape from reality. And, uh, that's all this is. So first impressions, long-winded version, folks, saying that my first impression is overwhelmingly positive. Uh, really enjoying it. Um, like I said, I may feature this aeroplane in an upcoming series, which where flying will really be secondary <laughs> to other content. And on that cryptic note, I'll leave you in the cruise here and see you for the approach into Victoria Falls. And so we have reached the concluding stages of the flight, folks. Around about uh, eight and a half miles to touchdown. We've got the ILS plugged in runway one, two here at Vicky Falls. That's the uh, the strip over there. Vicky Falls, the actual waterfally bits over here to the, um, towards the north of the field. It's starting to slow down. We might actually give Georgie a rest at this, uh, at this point. I'll just 
sink our throttles here a little bit. We'll take uh, auto throttle off, thank you, Georgie. And get some, some more flap out as we uh, turn from home, around about five miles. We've got that virtual waypoint plugged in, that five miles extended center line thing. Might end up being just slightly low. We'll, uh, we'll take gear once we turn for home, which we'll do momentarily. And keep our descent happening. There's the field. Runway 12, Victoria Falls, Zimbabwe. Shout out to all of my Zimbabwean viewers, should I have any. We've overshot the center line a tad there. Get the boots out, that'll help us to slow down. stage of flap, which will be flap 15. All right, get ourselves lined up with this runway. That speed's coming back. We're looking at a VRF of 130 with flaps 30. That's the outer marker. Not really paying any attention to the uh, glide slope <laughs> or the localizer, it's all visual. It's been a beautiful, uh, beautiful flight, great weather. Nice tailwind to boot. Take the next stage of flap, which will give us the 25, and uh, probably should have been configured flaps 30 by now, 800 feet above the deck. Looking pretty good, speed's coming back 140 now, we need a little bit more juice, re-trim, absolute pleasure to hand fly this thing. One thirty-five. wouldn't want to get any slower than that. A little bit more power coming in. Oh, we're going to get a little bit high on the slope, I think, if we're not careful. There we go. She's bright out the front, isn't it? Oh, particularly that first first bit of the runway. That's bloody bright. We're getting a little high now and a little quick. Get ourselves back on. Centerline pride, fella. 100. Thank you. Float it a little bit, I think. Yeah, so we're going to land a little long there. Not great. Go into a little bit of reverse. Let those auto brakes kick in. And through 80 knots now. Take the reverses out. Just roll a tad. Manual braking. The shadow looks like we've been fishtailing a lot more than what it actually felt like we were. <laughs> Perhaps that rollout was uh, was rougher than I thought. Folks, can I just say thank you once again for your company on another video. This has been a first impression style look at the PMDG 737-600. Uh, and overwhelmingly my first impression is definitely a positive one. To the point where, for me, the way I like to fly and what matters to me, I cannot, uh, I cannot find a significant fault with this aeroplane at all. So, talked about value during the flight, I'm definitely getting value from this aeroplane and look forward to flying it more. I hope that uh, wherever you are at the moment in this crazy mixed up world that you are well. I hope you're enjoying your simming and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.